So in 2012 or 13, in my Friday email, I wrote an email called Freedom from the Ghosts of Christmas Past. And I wrote a prayer in that email. It became the most read email that I've ever sent. And so I started doing a version of that every year at Christmas you know, sometime in late November, early December. And it became a kind of a tradition. And uh, that and the freedom from this freedom from sexual sins are the two prayers that I've written that have had the most response. That one is actually buried in our website and it drives a lot of our visits, our traffic online. You wouldn't believe that. It's the most read thing that I've ever put online freedom from sexual sins. And so I felt that this year I needed to do a, re a recorded version of some of this ministry uh, because one of the things that happened was in 2018, I had a dramatic healing of post-traumatic stress disorder. And that healing uh, has manifested itself many ways. And so uh it caused me to change the way I talk about the Christmas thing because Christmas is a source of trauma. So first I want to talk about why this time of year is so difficult for people. And it's not because we have difficult families and things. It's because of what Christmas is about. When we turn to the fourth chapter of first John, we read this. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit which does not confess Jesus is not of God. This is the spirit of Antichrist of which you have heard that was coming and now is in the world today. Now, that's bad translation. It's not even close to what normally is translated there, but often it will say any spirit that does not, that denies Jesus came in the flesh. St. Jerome, when he was translating the Vulgate, wrote in the notes that that was not the best Greek, that the best manuscripts were the oldest manuscripts, and those manuscripts said that any spirit that dissolves Jesus or diminishes Jesus is the spirit of Antichrist. And if you notice, all around you, the issue is never people out and out denying. It's always people who are, little by little, diminishing Jesus. You see this in churches a lot. Little by little, you don't talk about it. Little by little, you d d diminish what's happening. And if you look at Christmas, the Christmas season, there's a thousand little ways that Jesus is diminished. That the fact that Jesus became a man, God became a man, moved into the neighborhood, as it says in the message translation, is diminished. And so... Satan hates the incarnation. Satan hates the fact that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh, because that's the power. So he's doing everything he can to distract from that. And if you're a believer, Satan will come after you at this time of year. And so you have all these people. And what happens when, during the holiday season is that people have these terrible things that happened to them so that people get to hate Christmas and they don't celebrate it or they re resent it or they reject it or they get afraid of it. And so some of you probably have already had what I've had in the past, which is Christmas fear, Christmas anxiety. I used to get it in October and I would start to dread Christmas coming that early and I would just try to figure out every way to avoid it. How can I get around it? How can I plan to escape it? If you travel, if you read about addictions and recovery and counseling, you'll find that most people who have addictions 
have relapses during the holiday season. It's the time when people have the, the it, everything spikes, suicide spikes, domestic violence spikes. In the top 10, what they call the top 10 stressors, the most, the, you know, there's death, there's moving, there's birth, there's marriage. And in the top 10 loss of a job, in the top 10 stressors, they always list Christmas. And so it's, it's, you know, it's a time in the end of the year is coming. So there's a lot of pressure just to deal with the end of the year. So uh, it's a, it's a stressful time of year for a lot of people. And, and I'll just share briefly that for me personally, um, <clears throat> Christmas was, was a time of very great stress and difficulty in my family, there have been a number of deaths in the family. So it's been a really difficult time for all of my uh, relatives. My brother who just died, thank you. My brother who just died, his birthday is four days before Christmas. So this year it's going to be difficult. My mother's already mentioned it. And we won't mention all, all the other things that could happen at this time of year. So <clears throat> the first thing we have to do when we talk about trauma and getting healed is you have to talk about the event. And for some people, you know, there's also this, this thing, we've got to have the perfect Christmas. We've got to have the, you know, this, this myth that's been created by the media about what Christmas is going to look like and be like. And so you also have that. So a lot of people have major disappointment around it every year. And so that's another one of the things. So we're going to we're going to pray for healing of trauma today. One of the things we're going to do is we're going to, you know, I know on Sundays sometimes we do what I call the trauma touch up, which is a shorter version of my trauma prayer. Um, we're not going to do that today. We're going to do a longer version. We're also going to do a couple things that I don't normally do in, uh, in trauma ministry. And one is we're going to break generational curses. Because many times in families, there are generational curses of poverty, lack, all kinds of things. And these things come up to the surface during the holidays. So we're going to deal with that. And so when I pray for trauma, basically this is the steps. First, I, I begin with uh, forgiveness. You forgive those who've hurt you. You forgive yourself for your sinful reactions. Then you <laughs> we release God from any way we've held God responsible. Then today we're going to walk through some of the breaking of curses uh, piece. So there are five basic things that release a curse on a person or in a family. The first is idolatry, worship of other gods. The second and probably the very worst thing you can do is divination. And that is the consulting of evil spirits. So that's going to a psychic. That's the best way to put a curse on your whole family. And that always manifests in poverty. Third is the breaking of covenants. So that includes marriage. It includes breaking contracts. The fourth is the moving of boundaries. So I, one time I prayed for, asked, was asked to pray at a piece of property. This, the, people, everyone, the people who moved in were having all kinds of problems with their neighbors. And it turned out that the previous owner was a Christian, but he decided that he could just move the boundary. And so he put a fence on his neighbor's property and made his own yard bigger. But that's also when you know something that's right or wrong, if you know what God's you know, expects of us, and you do whatever you want, 
that's moving the boundary. And that's going to re release a curse on your life. And then the last one is sexual immorality of all kinds. And when you do any of these five things, you're going to release a curse on your life. So we're going to do some forgiveness, but we're also going to, I'm going to go through those five things. And we're going to, if there's anything, we're going to ask you to confess that to the Lord. And we're going to break the curse on your life. Then we're going to, uh, I'm going to take a moment to talk about deliverance and the release from evil spirits because there's all kinds of uh, evil spirits. And some of you may even have generational spirits that have been assigned to you since you were born. So we're going to break that. Then I'm going to uh, pray for your healing and we're actually going to pray for your brain. So I'm going to pray for the the uh, neural pathways. And I'll ask you to put your hand on your head. And we'll pray about this. And uh, then we'll pray for your whole body. And then if there's anything else, we will uh, deal with that. So that's that was that's the plan. All right. Um, before we move on, are there any questions? So no? what you're saying is, that the spirits get stirred up at Christmas. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize that. In oh. your family, in yourself, and in the world, right? Absolutely. Because they all, all the demons are on high alert for the same purpose at Christmas time. Because their enemy is the incarnation. Because God became a man, and that Satan hates that. So they all go on high alert for this one goal for everybody at that time that time of year. If they can get you to forget that God became a man, then they've got you. And the the other thing is that if you know because Jesus became a man, the Holy Spirit comes into us and we can look like Jesus. And God be can become flesh in our lives. So if, if you can be wounded at this time of year, that's going to keep you from walking into fullness. Mm. And I, I have to tell you, I heard the best testimony this week in my whole life. I'll tell you, one of the best testimonies, and it was from Karen. And she posted it on the Mighty Network uh, yesterday. And it was last Christmas. And she went and prayed for her ex-husband. Do you mind if I share this? Prayed for her ex-husband. So right there, this man who was a source of trauma in her life, she went and prayed for him on Christmas Day. And God healed him. And it was pretty miraculous. Can you uh, just add to it? Because you said that he was, was he in a coma or was he dead on arrival? What was the... Christmas Eve, I found out that he was in the hospital and then, uh, and, but I had to work, I don't, I don't know, but so I, my son sent me there Christmas day. I went there in the morning and um, I did not know at that time that he had been in the hospital for a couple of days. I knew he was in the hospital for a couple of days and he was in a comatose sedated state at that time. Um, not until he left the hospital did I find out that he was dead on arrival when he showed up at the hospital from a drug overdose. Wow. So did they resuscitate him? Is that what happened? I They must have. He, uh, okay. he was taking fentanyl and the drug dealer gave him a combination of uh, cocaine and sleeping pills. <gasps> and that caused him to whatever. You killed him. Yeah, killed him. Oh, wow. But well, um, I, so tell it just I, briefly, because this will be this will give give us some faith. I'll tell you, gave me a lot of faith yesterday. So I went Christmas morning, and um, at at that time, I it was something new listening to the 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 series that you were doing on on the prayer, the Lord's prayer, and that was important. I, I I never had heard it before about I don't know it was just something new, it was and I felt like God gave me a, a special revelation on just 
asking him to come into a situation. I, I never saw it that way, you know, the prayer. And at the same time that week, I had received a, a letter with the Lord's prayer in it. And it was just odd. I'm like, but I knew it, it seemed like a setup. So I, I went with the, the Lord's prayer and knowing that, and I knew God was sending me there and I was kind of very stressful about going, but I got there <laughs> And I was kind of like, I don't know how to pray, but I'm going to go. And I know I felt like I got there to the hospital. And, um, you know, because I am the ex-wife, you don't find out any information. But they allowed me in. And because they knew I was his only friend, I was the only one that went to the hospital the duration that he oh, was wow. there. Oh, wow. And so um, I went in and I uh, prayed I just, um, I had heard testimony of some people being raised from the dead. And um, so <laughs> I, t I touched his blanket by his feet. I asked um, the Holy Father, you know, I kind of did like the Lord's Prayer in a way, asking uh, God to come into the situation, how you explained about God's authority coming into this situation and for him to, uh, and then I asked uh, him to, the Lord to heal him, obviously, and in in the name of Jesus, by the, by the power of the blood of Jesus. And what happened when you touched his feet? I touched his feet and he just, he shot up in a, like sat up. And I, I thought, well, <laughs> you know, cause he was like flat on the, you know, they had him strapped in with the thing on his, you know, a resuscitator and he was comatose, I, you know, not, you know, just all hooked up and um, he shot up. And then I thought, okay. Yeah. I, and, but, but then I thought, well, maybe it just was an, a just coincidence. So, and I mean, I thought maybe that guy did it, but then I thought, ah, I don't know. So I, I, I just prayed again. Cause I didn't know. What if God was, I, it's just by faith. Mm -hmm. So I speed again and prayed, you know, the same thing that God just come in and um, take hold of this situation and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And um, he shot up again, sat up again. And I'm like, that, and I just, <laughs> I just, that, you know, yeah, this was the connection. Then I was kind of like, oh no, is the nurse going to know? Are they going <laughs> to So I knew it was a distinct moment it was on Christmas. Then he um, said, you know, I know somebody prayed for me, but I didn't know who, you know, because I go, did you know that I prayed? And he goes, why? Well, somehow in his comatose state, this whatever sedated state that they put him in, hmm. he knew that so someone prayed for him and he knew that, um, that God had healed him. Well, thank you, Karen. I really appreciate I, you hearing that. That that I, was amazing. You know, and I I felt like that sort of was a sign of what you know we need to do when it comes to these things with the holidays, because you know that's what God wants to do. He wants to bring resurrection in this time. That the the kingdom of God is going to manifest in this time in our lives. Well, great. Well, we're going to go into the ministry time now. And uh, hey, Chris, yes, sir. Yeah. Before you go on, could you could you re go over that uh, five the list of five things again? Absolutely. Just... Yeah. So <clears throat> the first one is the is idolatry, the worship of other gods. This is actually why Freemasonry is such a problem, because it's all about worshiping other gods and then making covenants with them. And breaking covenants, so so that's why people get come under such serious curses with this. The second one was uh, I'm probably not going to do it in the same order. Is sexual immorality. Third is breaking of covenants. The fourth is moving of boundary stones. And the fifth one, I forgot. Divination. Divination. Thank you. Glad I have my assistant here. He gets a gold star. Divination. 
And this one is extremely, it's probably the thing that causes the worst for people. That is the consulting of the dead, consulting of evil spirits for information. When someone visits a psychic, it's a terrible thing. Serious stuff. So divination, moving of boundary stones, breaking of covenants, sexual immorality, and idolatry. And anything else will follow. Anything else that you read or say, there's, sometimes you'll see different lists. They all fall under these five categories. Mm -hmm. and that is what will release a curse. And what a curse is, is a landing strip in your life for the demonic. Trauma does the same thing. So when you suffer abuse, when you suffer any violence, traumatic event, when you have any sustained stress for 30 days or longer, that becomes trauma. And so, you know, when we were doing, during the COVID period, you know, about once a month in our uh, weekly meeting, I did a, a short version of the trauma prayer because the stress of that period on people was really was becoming traumatic stress, post-traumatic stress for people. How this trauma manifests is going to be hypervigilance, anxiety, cold sweats, uh, un un uncontrollable emotional responses, um, anger, rage, all that stuff. Is, is a sign of post-traumatic stress. So, so you, you start to, if as the holidays approach, if you start to feel a little crazy, that's why. And, and a lot of people do, they just don't know why, and that's why. But it's easy to get free. So uh, is there anything else before we go on? Thank you for doing that. Oh, you're welcome. My pleasure. Well, why don't you just, one of the things I always like to do when I pray for trauma is to, oh, hold on. There we go. Um, just take a deep breath. Take, <clears throat> breathe in and just kind of, There we go. We're not going to dwell on the things from the past. But I just want you to know that, that the things that happened to us at this time of year, um, that it wasn't your fault and it wasn't God's plan for your life. You know, God is good. So when people, when, you know, hurt, as they say, hurting people hurt people. So, you know, people, bad things happen to them and they're carrying it. So just go ahead and just think, you know, just, just realize that God is good and he didn't want this. And God's plan for you is healing and wholeness. As it says in Isaiah 61, verses 1 and 2, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. So, you know, we're, we're believing today that there's going to be freedom, not just for you, but for those who are listening afterwards. So, you know, this isn't a group counseling session. This is healing prayer. And I'm going to walk you through the process of forgiveness, deliverance, and healing. So, um, I'm, you know, if you aren't sure about your commitment to Christ, you'll get the most out of this if you've made Jesus your Lord and Savior. And I believe that everyone on this call has. So, uh, But you really need to know Jesus in order to get the fullness of healing. So let's start with forgiveness. First, let's start with the, the general thing. So uh, you can close your eyes for this, all right, if you want. If the... First, let's just, there's just the whole system around Christmas. 
uh, a lot of people are making money off Christmas. And we don't have any names or faces. We just have, it's like a, a vague thing. You know, it's just the way, the direction the culture is going. So let's just release that. You know, and if you, you know, I forgive Macy's or, and all of that. Just, you know, just in your mind, I want you to just release the whole system that you feel caught in. And if any of it makes you feel angry, I want you to uh, just imagine that anger as a big red ball. Just in your in your imagination, throw it off to Jesus and let him catch it, all right? Do with it what he wants. And now if there's someone who, who's hurt you, it could be a family member, spouse, children uh, around you know a, an event i want you to forgive that person yeah, and just say in the name of jesus i forgive you for hurting me and it, and if you have to just imagine that person standing in front of you and just say to them i forgive you and let them walk off to jesus Go ahead and just you say it under your breath. It really helps if you're active in this. Sometimes it's disappointment. I forgive you for disappointing me. For some of you, there may be someone who's died around Christmas, go ahead and forgive them. Sometimes we have people in our lives who aren't dead, who act like they're dead, who aren't in their life, our life for whatever reason. And sometimes losing people, the people you lose come to mind at this time of year and it's harder to grieve a person who's alive. So just go ahead and forgive that person as well. And then one of the best things you can do is to bless and bless these people. So we bless all those people that we forgive today. We bless you. We release you to God. You're not my problem anymore. <laughs> Take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that's good it's good now this is the harder one usually for most people i forgive me you know i forgive i'll say it and then i want you to repeat it with your own name all right so i forgive chris for your sinful reactions to other people's sin so don't forgive me forgive yourself your own simple reactions. If there's any, if you've done anything that's self-destructive, using substances, back behaviors, whatever, I want you to just say, God, I, I confess this to you. I know it's sin. And I release it to you. Now we need to renounce any ways, any vows we've made. So if you, you've if you've made a vow, I will never let this and that happen to me again. That's the vow. Just say, I break any vow or curse that I've spoken over myself or any other person right now. I'll never be poor. I'll never have a Christmas like this again. 
I'll never do that again. I'll never just. Great. Father, we just take care of that. We break that right now in Jesus' name. And then, uh, and then now let's release God. So God, I release you for not protecting me or preventing this these things from happening. We release that to you now, Father. I release you from all the responsibility I've had made you responsible for things that I I've held over to held over you in Jesus name. Good. How's that? Brilliant. <laughs> well, in the name of Jesus, I release you now. Okay. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, we're going to do a really easy thing. which The Bible says that if we resist the devil, he must flee. That's James 4, 7. And that's very simple. And all that is, is that I'm going to call out some things. The Lord's going to give me some words of knowledge, probably. And when he does, I will, I'll, if, if any of that rese rese resonates with you, and that could mean you feel something. A lot of people feel a tightness, or they might feel things moving inside of them, physical sensations. If you feel any sensation, I just want you to take a deep breath and blow it out. Don't hold on to it, okay? And we're just going to resist the devil, and he will flee. And we take authority over this whole call, and everyone around it. We ask you, Lord, for your angels to help us today. And nothing is going to obstruct this time. So the first one I, I got this morning was the spirit of poverty. So if we just take authority over the spirit of poverty, and you have to go now. Spirit of poverty limits our, 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 our sense of possibilities. And so we become narrow and we get locked into thinking that, that limits us. So we just take authority over any spirit of poverty. You have to go to Jesus. Just take a deep breath and blow it out. Any spirit of antichrist and the spirit of death, which is related to that, you have to go. Every uh, spirit of sexual immorality and perversion, you have to go. Anything related to addiction. Every lying spirit, you have to go now. Just take a deep breath, blow it out. Or you can cough. You have to go to Jesus. You can't hang around here. You can't go visit somebody else. You can't come back later. You have to go to Jesus now. We also take authority over the spirit of witchcraft. And I mentioned death, spirit of death. You have to go. Condemnation, fear, grief, the orphan spirit. You're not an orphan. Take authority over the orphan spirit now. Just blow it out. Don't hold on. Every spirit of infirmity and sickness. What about loneliness? Well, we take authority over the spirit of loneliness. You have to go now. Isolation abandonment, everything related to that, the thing that you're all alone and no one's going to remember me. We take authority over that right now. In Jesus' name. And anything else that will not bow its knee to the name of Jesus, we're not going to give too much time to this. You have to go now. Take a deep breath. Just I want you to just breathe in deep. Blow it out. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. If there's anything else that's hanging around, I don't want to rush past this. But we don't want to hang out here either. You okay, Martin? 
Yeah. Good. Good. All right. It might sound daft. You're not daft. Or it doesn't. Okay. It might. It might sound daft, but I have found that, as you must probably aware, that my respite is to go and play golf mm-hmm. nine holes, mm-hmm. and I can actually get more stressed on the golf course than when I was there. And then when I realise that something's really going badly and I can't even hit a golf ball, I then pray the prayer that I've been taught to lift whoever's been cursing me, and all of a sudden I play really well. <laughs> oh, are we taking? Well, well, that's interesting because I did get a sense, and well, well, let's talk. Let's just I'm going to pray about this particular thing because that's the spirit of witchcraft, and so we take authority over all witchcraft now in Jesus' name. And anything related to anything that you've been bearing up under witchcraft directed against you in Jesus' name, we break that. The Bible says that a curse without a cause cannot alight. So we just declare right now that 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 witchcraft has to go back to Jesus. Can't touch us. We bless those who curse us. We bless you with the blood of Jesus. We bless you with an awareness of the cross of Christ. We bless you with a holy fear of the Lord. And now let's just tackle these five things. Anything that causes a curse in our life. And it's very simple to break curses. We're going to break the curse and then we'll pray for your healing. Okay. So, because curses are related to to, um, deliverance and the demonic. So, just just say this after me. I believe that Jesus, you are the Son of God. Jesus, you are the Son of God. And you are the only way to God. And you are the only way to God. Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross. Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross. And scripture tells us that anyone who dies on a tree and scripture tells us anyone that who dies on a tree becomes a curse. Becomes a curse. So Jesus, you became a curse for us. That you became a curse for us. So that we could enter into the blessing. So that we could enter into the blessing. So in the name of Jesus. From the name of Jesus. We break every curse. We break every, we break every curse. It's an operation in our lives. That is an operation in our lives. Especially anything that manifests at Christmas time. Especially anything that manifests at Christmas time. And we declare right now that we are going to walk into the blessing of Abraham. And we declare right now that we're going to walk into the blessing of Abraham. Whom God blessed in all things. Whom God blessed in all things. Amen. Amen. Well, re- receive this. Receive this. That if anyone is in Christ, anyone, you, is- you, know, you just you didn't have to say it, but that's great. That's good. <laughs> if anyone is in Christ, they are new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, the new has come. That's Second Corinthians five seventeen. So we're going to declare the new today now over you. I want you to put your hand on your heart. Just receive this prayer, okay? Let it go in. You don't have to do anything. Father, we ask you to heal my brothers and sisters today for every place where the demonic is left and heal every place that's been traumatized through living under a curse, through events. We ask you, Lord, even to call forth a new blessed memories. And we're going to pray for your memories, but we ask you for healing and we especially ask that you would restore the sense of being. Just bring healing, Jesus. Only you can heal. Only you can meet the needs. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want you to go ahead and put your hand on the right side of your head. It'll be opposite mine. Okay. Good. <laughs> Rontes is going to take a nap after this is over. Um, uh, we take authority over all the neural pathways. I want you to imagine your that the brain 
pathways in your head are like little trees, okay? Some of those branches bear bad fruit, so we're going to cut those off in Jesus' name. So we cut off every neural pathway connected to trauma right now in the name of Jesus. And we, my father's the vine dresser, and he cuts off every branch that doesn't bear good fruit. So we cut off those branches right now, and we call forth new neural pathways to come forth. We speak over your memory centers, and every negative memory related to the trauma of the past has to pass from your body as waste, and we release the positive memories, Father, that you would bring forth joyful memories related to Christmas and to, to trauma. I speak over everyone's sleep cycle, that you would return to normal, that you'd have a normal sleep pattern. And I declare Psalm 127.2 over you, that the Lord gives to his beloved sleep. Psalm 4 you will lie down in peace. At once you will fall asleep. Put your hand on the back of your head. We speak to the pleasure centers of your brain. And we declare that they will function normally. Any place where dopamine or adrenaline or cortisol have been released at too high a level, we say come back to normal. You do not have to trigger your... Uh, your pleasure centers anymore. We cancel any patterns of addiction that may have been used to trigger pleasure, to cover up for trauma. Just break that pattern right now in Jesus' name. I speak to your five senses, and I disconnect them from the trauma of the past, and I declare that they will only be used to receive God's appointed messages and information. I say the five senses will no longer be used as a trigger point for trauma in Jesus' name. I call your body and brain chemistry back into order, and I bless all the systems of your body. Bless your endocrine system. I bless your bones and your teeth. I bless your muscles. I bless your circulation in your heart. I bless your lungs and respiration. I bless your digestion. I bless your reproduction. I bless your skin. I bless everything from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. And we cut off the patterns of the past. In Jesus' name, we break off every generational pattern. Going back to Adam. In Jesus' name, we call forth all the things <clears throat> that have been missing or broken. I speak over your DNA right now in Jesus' name. and in, in the name of the Father, we declare that any part of your DNA that's not functioning at full capacity, full function, come back to life now. That your DNA would function. That the, the parts of you that have just been turned, shut down would come back to life. I speak over the left hemisphere of your brain that may have been shut down because of trauma, and we say, come back to life. We, we declare that your head and your heart are going to function in tandem. Your right and left hemispheres of your brain are going to function in tandem. And that good things are going to happen in Jesus' name. And I'm going to ask you to repeat after me some declarations, and uh, the first one is <clears throat> that Christmas is God's appointed time. Christmas is God's appointed time to celebrate that the Word became flesh. To celebrate the Word became flesh, and the Word is going to become flesh in my life. And the Word is going to become flesh in my life. Because I am a child of the King. Because I am a child of the King. I am a co-heir with Jesus. I am a co-heir with Jesus. All Jesus bought and paid for is my inheritance. All Jesus bought and paid for is my inheritance. I am loved. I am loved. I am forgiven. 
I am forgiven. I am cleansed by the blood. I am cleansed by the blood. I am accepted in the beloved. I am accepted in the beloved. I am filled with the Holy Spirit. I am filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus lives in me and transforms me from the inside out. Jesus lives in me and transforms me from the inside out. I have angels protecting me. I have angels protecting me. And assisting me in the ministry of Jesus. And assisting me in the ministry of Jesus. I am united with Jesus. I am united with Jesus. I have been crucified with Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. I died with him. I died with him. I was buried with him. I was buried with him. I have been raised with him. I have been raised with him. I am seated with him in heavenly places. I am seated with him in heavenly places. Above all rule and authority. Above all rule and authority. Above every name that is named. Of above every name that is named, not only in this age, not only in this age, but in the age to come, but in the age to come, I carry the authority of Jesus. I carry the authority of Jesus. I have authority over sickness. I have authority over sickness. Over sin. Over sin. Over, sin. over demons. Over demons. Over demons. And over the world. And over the world. I am the salt of the earth. I am the salt of the earth. I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. All things work together for good in my life. All things work together for good in my life. Because I love God. Because I love God. And I am called according to his purpose. And I am called according to his purpose. I can do all things through Christ. I can do all things through Christ. Because greater is he that is in me. As greater as he that is in me, than he that is in the world. Than he that is in the world. Amen. 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 Great. Well, great. You know, one thing. One thing that when I first saw the saw the you know this thing in your newsletter, the thing I've always struggled with with Christmas is just the expectations. That's right. There's certain expectations in church. There's certain expectations in community and family. Absolutely. And it's like, like regarding church, it's like we got to a place where just like, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, you know, two or three weeks before Christmas, it's like, we'll see you next year. It's like, didn't want anything to do with it. <laughs> so it's just, uh, well, you it's know, like, this is an interesting thing because I agree with you. Uh, one of the things that I found, uh, in a lot of churches is that they do the world more than the world does. And they think that's being Chris Christian at Christmas time. And they just fill up the calendar so thick that you can't function. And uh, I, one thing that, that's been really helpful about this is because, you know, I'm really grateful that I came from a church background where Chris, the time before Christmas actually quiets down rather than gets hyped up. But most churches get hyped up. And, and, uh, there's a great book called Unplugging the Christmas Machine. And what I found is that that's helped me with this Christmas trauma thing is to do less rather than more. You know, I have a but I have a really strict limitation on what I spend at Christmas time. I'm very strict about what I do at Christmas. I don't add a lot of things and I choose two or three things that mean a lot to me. And that's all I do. I don't do everything. And that's really, really helped me uh, with it and maintaining rest, peace, you know, and, you know, and, and, it, and I, I don't think there's anything wrong with what you said about, you know, see you next year. It, that, that might be the best way to do it, you know, just to, uh, because because you want to you know in the end of end of it all you know glitter and glitz and parties are not all that important you know or concerts or cookie exchanges or you know some of it's good but yeah you know, I I hope I didn't cut you off I just wanted to get that little no that was good yeah yeah that's great that's great 
And that'll really help you maintain this healing. 